I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Matthew 25, 36. Dear Lord, these words call us to action, compassion, and to see your face in the faces of those in need. Help us and inspire us by your spirit to see those that are downtrodden, sick, imprisoned, and hurting. Give us the courage to reach out, the wisdom to serve effectively, and the love to make a difference in the lives of others. May our hands be your hands, our words your words, as we minister to those around us. Empower us to be a reflection of your love, bringing comfort and hope to those in need. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for making prayer a priority in your life. Follow this podcast and listen weekly to receive godly wisdom and practical advice for daily living. Today's news at a glance, will Purdue Pharma escape accountability through legal loopholes? Garland appoints David Weiss as a special counsel into the Hunter Biden probe, and the Maui fires raise ethical and financial paradoxes for locals and tourists alike. Today's stories have a common theme, accountability. And while it's important to keep those in power accountable to their actions, we never want to lose sight of our own accountability to righteousness and the Lord. So today we rejoice that true freedom isn't a license to do whatever we want, but rather the ability to do what's right. Today our prayer is that we would remain accountable to righteousness and the mission of Christ. Our first story of today is about the Supreme Court taking on Purdue Pharma. The Supreme Court has temporarily blocked a bankruptcy deal involving Purdue Pharma that would shield the Sackler family from future opioid claims. This decision brings some significant ethical questions and calls for us to reflect on the role of big pharmaceutical companies in the opioid epidemic. A quick note before we dive deeply into the story. We understand that the opioid crisis has affected so many people. If you or someone you love has been affected by addiction, know that you're not alone. We pray that Christ's love will comfort, heal, and redeem your situation. So what's happening right now with Purdue Pharma and the Supreme Court? Purdue Pharma, once celebrated for its innovative contributions to medicine, now stands accused of having a pronounced role in the opioid epidemic that claims over 70,000 lives annually in the U.S. The sale of OxyContin, a painkiller that led many Americans to opioid addiction and death, fueled fines and lawsuits against the company. The company reached a bankruptcy deal that would have paid up to $6 billion to thousands of plaintiffs. Compared to what they made though over years of peddling drugs, this is pocket change. A significant point of contention was the liability protection of the Sackler family who owned Purdue Pharma. This decision was challenged leading to the Supreme Court's intervention. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor presented the order to recall and stay the original ruling, thereby halting the $6 billion bankruptcy settlement. The Supreme Court directed the parties to address whether bankruptcy law authorizes a blanket shield from lawsuits filed by all opioid victims. The court's action means a decision will likely come down next year, though. Critics of the ongoing deal argue that this constitutes an abuse of the bankruptcy system, raising severe constitutional questions and leaving the Sackler family off the hook. The case raises complex ethical considerations. On one hand, we want to be urgent about providing compensation to victims to fund initiatives and to fight the opioid crisis. But on the other hand, there's a question of accountability here and the potential misuse of bankruptcy law to shield individuals and companies from legal liability from wrongdoing. The Sackler family's maneuver to funnel almost $11 billion out of the firm while seeking liability protections adds to the outcry. There's a pervasive sentiment that justice has not been served and that the deal would inadvertently condone unethical business practices. The situation invites contemplation on themes of justice, mercy, and integrity. The Bible emphasizes the importance of justice in holding individuals accountable for their actions. We see this in many different scriptures, poignantly in Micah 6, 8. The question of shielding the Sackler family from future opioid claims brings into focus the principle of fair judgment and the necessity of holding those responsible for wrongdoing accountable. The cries of the victims and their families must not go unheard. Compassion and empathy for those suffering are paramount. Jesus' teachings urge us to comfort the afflicted and seek ways to heal the wounded and help those that are in need. We see this in Matthew 25, 36.
The case reminds us of the importance of moral integrity in business practices. The Apostle Paul's writings teach us to conduct ourselves honorably in honesty in all matters in 2 Corinthians 8.21. The Supreme Court's decision to block Purdue Pharma's bankruptcy deal for now is a significant development in the ongoing battle against the opioid crisis, making sure that pharmaceutical companies and individuals that have a stake in them are held accountable it opens a space for deep reflection on big pharmaceutical companies' role, business practice ethics, and a balance between justice and compassion. Frequently, these companies will weigh the legal risk of the harm their drugs will cause against how much money they will make from the drugs themselves. If they think the drug will cause $30 million in legal damages from lawsuits, but will make them $200 million in profits, they'll see that as a win and they'll go forward with the drug. There are lives hidden in those numbers. Families ruined, livelihoods lost. And so keeping these pharmaceutical companies accountable is paramount, not just for the sake of overarching accountability, but the individuals whose lives will be affected. As we await the court's final ruling, we will continue to pray for wisdom for those making these vital decisions, healing for those affected by the crisis, and renewed commitment to integrity and justice in all sectors of society. May this situation serve as a catalyst for positive change and an awakening of our shared responsibility to one another. So, with that being said, let's lift the situation up in prayer, giving it up to the Lord who is ultimately in control. Heavenly Father, we lift up all those affected by the opioid crisis, praying for comfort, healing, and redemption. Grant wisdom to the courts and all involved in making decisions that affect the lives of countless individuals. Help us to strive for justice and compassion in our society, and guide us in our collective responsibility to care for one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next story of today is another episode in the saga of Hunter Biden. Attorney General Merrick Garland has appointed U.S. Attorney David Weiss as a special counsel, leading the investigation into Hunter Biden. This news comes with a considerable political and legal debate surrounding Hunter Biden's financial activities and tax charges. Let's delve into the implications of this development and conclude by reflecting on it from a christ Center perspective. So what are the key details we need to know? David Weiss, the U.S. Attorney for the District of Delaware, has been investigating criminal conduct allegations against Hunter Biden since 2019. The decision to elevate his status to special counsel reflects the significant stage the investigation has reached. Weiss sought this elevation, indicating that his work required the independence and authority that a special counsel status actually provides. In a related development, the plea deal between Hunter Biden and the government has collapsed. The parties reaching an impasse following negotiations after a hearing held July 26th. Hunter Biden had initially agreed to plead guilty to not paying taxes for 2017 and 18 in certain business dealings. However, this deal met resistance in court after a judge expressed reluctance to accept its revised terms on the base that it was uncomfortably friendly to Hunter Biden. And it was a plea deal that no other average citizen would have been given. And so Hunter Biden came in expecting special privileges. Republican-led congressional investigations have been underway for a while now, and certain representatives involved in the probe quickly voiced discontent with Garland's announcement. They argued that the move was part of an attempt to cover up the Biden family's alleged corruption. Representative James Comer accused the Biden Justice Department of trying to stonewall congressional oversight. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy warned that this action must not be used to obstruct congressional investigations, but, but the appointment of Weiss as special counsel could be monumental. It provides assurance that the investigation will continue independently and hopefully untainted by political influence and based solely on facts and law. We'll watch to see if that is fact or hopeful fiction. Hunter Biden faces a potentially intense legal battle as the plea deal has fallen apart and a trial now appears likely. The situation is indicative of a broader concern about corruption and political maneuvering. The details of the allegations against Hunter Biden involving substantial amounts of money in international dealings will likely be dissected in the public sphere. Interestingly, the media's reaction to this development has been complex. Given the changed nature of this case, there will undoubtedly be varying opinions and interpretations across different media outlets. Many news outlets dismissed Hunter Biden's alleged activities as politically charged conspiracy theories. However, the appointment of the special counsel gives merit to the growing concern about corruption and political leveraging by Hunter Biden. So we're going to continue to watch this with 
an unbiased approach. We're going to report and then we're going to offer some reflection. So here's our reflection for today. Reflecting on this event invites us to consider the principle of justice, truth, and integrity. In Proverbs 21, we are reminded that to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. It prompts us to hope that the appointment of the special counsel ensures a fair and unbiased investigation rather than a biased cover-up. We want truth to prevail in all situations. Moreover, the situation should urge us to pray for wisdom and discernment for all involved in this matter. Investigators, the judiciary, the media, and even those accused. May God's will be done in uncovering the truth, and may His grace be with those who are facing these serious allegations. It also serves as a reminder to everyone, regardless of our political affiliations, to strive for honesty and integrity in our own lives. We must not let power or personal gain lead us astray from righteousness. Political and legal scandal abounds in our country, on both sides, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Libertarians, Green Party, whoever you are, political scandal and political corruption abounds. And while it's important to report on those issues and hold our leaders accountable, it's even more important to consider our own hearts. Have we built wealth, reputation, and status on lies? When faced with consequences for our actions, do we own our mistakes and repent? Or do we continue down the roller coaster of half-truths and cover-ups? The appointment of David Weiss as special counsel in the Hunter Biden probe is a significant and thought-provoking development. It highlights the complexity of legal and political dynamics in our current times. And by keeping our eyes focused on Christ, we can find hope and guidance in our faith. And we can call for the Spirit of the Lord to convict us where we have fallen short. We want to trust in God's sovereign plan in all things, and that includes in our own lives. Whether this case will lead to clarity or further contention, we'll see. So with that being said, let's lift this up in prayer. Lord, we pray for wisdom, truth, justice, as this investigation concerning Hunter Biden comes forward. Guide those involved to act with integrity and impartiality, seeking what is right. May this situation also remind us to strive for honesty in our own lives and help us to reflect on our actions and our responsibilities to the truth. Keep us accountable in all things, Lord, and may we always ground ourselves in your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Our final story is an update on what's happening in Maui. Maui faces an unprecedented tragedy with a wildfire that has left 96 and counting dead and massive destruction in its wake. This is the deadliest wildfire in the US in over a century and has led to concerns about government response and the role of tourism and the threat from outside real estate developers. The wildfire tore through 80% of the town of Lahaina, leaving a rebuilding cost estimated over $5.5 billion. The destruction scale is vast, but officials have only searched 3% of the affected area, and there's over a thousand people still missing, indicating the death toll could rise significantly in the coming weeks. Residents and officials are criticizing the government's perceived mishandling of the disaster. Not only were there skipped steps in preventing this disaster, but the response has been slow and bureaucratic. The local and federal government seem overwhelmed and unable to pour the appropriate amount of resources into aid. Locals have reported that volunteers have been far more effective in providing relief than the local government or even the federal government has, leaving many feeling isolated and unsupported by the administration. Hawaiian Electric is under scrutiny as well for failing to de-energize the power grid with windy weather approaching. This is common practice, especially for places like California where wildfires are common. The lack of preemptive measures has resulted in a class action lawsuit Furthermore, the shutting down of electric power complicated firefighting efforts, highlighting a series of missteps that happened afterwards. Hawaii's largest outdoor integrated siren system, designed for tsunamis, failed to warn residents of the imminent fire. Questions are now being raised about the government's failure to provide adequate warning through its well-known systems. Tourism, accounting for 80% of Maui's economy, presented a complicated issue as well. While celebrities and officials are urging tourists to stay away, the presence of hotels with backup generators and housing play a vital role in disaster recovery. There's a balancing act between respecting the suffering of the locals and maintaining a critical industry that aids in relief efforts. An influx of tourists would currently be a burden to the efforts to rebuild in Maui. However, if there are no tourists, 80% of the local economy would take a nosedive and it would be a disastrous hit. So on top of losing homes, the locals would lose jobs. So it's a terrible paradox that Hawaii finds itself in. The economy is fueled by tourism, 
However, tourism is going to hurt the rebuilding efforts. So what are we going to do here? There's also this threat of outside developers. Locals are concerned about outside real estate developers looking to capitalize on the tragedy. Real estate agents are already looking to buy up some of the charred and burned condominiums so that they can buy at a low price and then sell for a higher price later on. For every tragedy, there are plenty of people that are trying to capitalize. This would lead to an increase in the already high median home price of $1.2 million, threatening the essence of Maui residents. They would no longer really be able to live in their hometown. They would be pushed out, as many locals have already been pushed out by the rising housing prices and tourism. In the wake of this terrible catastrophe, our hearts reach out to the people of Maui. The tragedy reveals a complex interplay of social, economic, and moral issues that resonate with Christian principles of compassion, stewardship, and justice. We are called to reflect the nature of community and our responsibility to our fellow human beings. The story of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 reminds us to care for those in need, for those that have been beat up and left. Volunteer groups stepping up where the government's response has faltered exemplifies this call to compassion and service. It's a triumph of the human spirit. The tension between economic survival and moral responsibility, as seen in the tourism and real estate dynamics, echoes the biblical warnings against greed and the pursuit of material wealth at the expense of others in 1 Timothy 6.10. Lastly, the failure in preparedness and systematic shortcomings bring to mind the importance of wisdom, prudence, and the pursuit of justice. The Bible calls for righteousness and leadership and justice in all of our dealings, urging us to build systems that protect and serve everybody, especially in times of crisis. In these dark times, Maui's tragedy invites us to pray, reflect, and maybe even spring into action, aligning ourselves with God's heart for justice, compassion, and community building. It is a time to mourn with those who mourn and extend our hands in support, seeking to bring healing and hope to this paradise that has been set ablaze. So let's pray for the people of Maui, and let's pray that justice and compassion would rule in our own hearts. Heavenly Father, we lift up the people of Maui in their time of grief and loss. Grant them strength and courage to rebuild, wisdom to the authorities to respond justly, and compassion to neighbors and strangers alike to aid in recovery. May your grace and your mercy be a comforting presence in this tragic time, and lead us to reflect on our own responsibilities to one another and the people around us. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast and make Bible study and prayer the priority of your life. And if you are enjoying this podcast, let someone else know. Pass the good news around to others. The podcast is a moving and inspiring biblical audio experience that will help you master wisdom from the world's greatest book. In each episode, you'll learn to apply biblical principles to everyday life. Each cinematic episode is a journey through the Bible's most profound stories that will strengthen your appreciation of the Word and inspire you to keep learning.